All right, everyone, thank you for being a part of this. We are going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is uh, Jeremy Kirby. I'm Director of Sales here at Sustain. Um, and of course, I have Krista Carpin with me today. Um, thank you all for joining us. Obviously, we love having you. Um, today, what we're going over is the brand new uh, Burner Breaker. We'll also go over Strike a little and, of course, Secure View. I will get you in and out of here probably in only about 30 minutes, so we'll do this fast for you guys. Um, one thing I do want to mention, those of you that might be attending the High Tech Crimes Conference out in Vegas next week, we will be there as well and we are doing a live demonstration. We're gonna be holding a session on the Burner Breaker. Um, so I'll go into just real fast, a little bit about Burner Breaker, what it is, what it's capable of, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and actually show the program, show the software. So the Burner Breaker is literally the only tool in the world capable of breaking into locked burner phones. Those are your prepaid phones, your throwaway phones, those cheap Alcatels, which we'll show you later, that are inundating our prison systems. Um, all of those are uh, in use for the burner breaker. Um, and by the way, guys, I do have my chat window open. If anyone has any questions um, or like they can't hear me, send a quick chat message, something like that. But I'm getting okay thumbs up from everyone, so we should be good to go. Um, so again, burner breaker was designed because uh, we have this thing called the SB strike. And the SB strike is a pin code, pass code, pattern breaking software box, hardware software combination that works on USB OTG cell phones. So your nicer smartphones, your galaxies, iPhones up to iOS 8.0, that type of stuff. Um, that's used to break into those phones. But what's happening is we were hearing back from our users and they were saying, hey, we have your SB Strike, uh, we have a few other tools, and they're not working on our Android phones. What's going on? And what's happening is there were Android phones that are not built with USB OTG capability. And that's over 60 million phones in the United States every year. Every one of the, your, your Alcatels, your Z, a lot of your ZTE phones, you know, your, your cheap phones that everyone's buying at Target, 7-Eleven, in the grocery store, um, that type of thing. Even uh, notepads, you know, tablets. So that's why we created the burner breaker, and it's the only tool that can break into those phones. Now, what you're looking at on your screen is Secure View. When you buy the Burner Breaker, that's the SecureView ultimate kit. So when you get Burner Breaker, you're getting SecureView logical, you're getting SecureView physical, you're getting all of our analytics, you're getting the SV Strike for your smarter cell phones, and you're getting, of course, the Burner Breaker robot, the actual hardware um, for the phones. What I'm very excited to tell you, all of my government agencies that are with us today, um, <clears throat> excuse me, here in the United States, all software is created here in the U.S., which is wonderful. So please keep that in mind. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to jump in, just give you a brief demonstration of what SecureView, that's the cell phone forensic software, what that is capable of. And we're going to do a phone on the strike, and then we're going to do about three or four phones on Burner Breaker, and I'll get you out of here. Um, so, Krista, if you'd like, go ahead and click on Acquire for me. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you acquire data from a cell phone, you can choose either the phone um, or tablets, obviously. So we'll just click on phone real fast. You can then do logical and physical. Yes, SecureView does now do physical acquisitions. Um, if you have, obviously, the, the, the Apex, which is our physical explorer. Um, what's neat about it is locked LG phones. It can get a physical image even if they're uh, passcode protected. It will still pull off physical images on a lot of those phones. And your other Android, like your Samsungs, um, use a rooting tool. Once those are rooted, you can easily pull a physical image off and then view it in our Apex Physical Explorer, which is really neat. And again, when you get the burner breaker, you get all of this, and that's why we're going over it a little today. Um, I'll have Chris just click on Advanced Logical, because um, that's what everyone starts with is the logical acquisitions, your text, your emails, your call histories. For Android and iPhone, it's completely the same. It looks the same. So Krista can click on uh, Android, 
And this next page will look completely the same, whether it's iPhone or Android. And these are the, this is the data set that you're getting off of those phones. So nice and simple. Now, also, uh, we do work on feature phones. We have the largest selection of feature phones in the mobile forensic industry. Um, so if you don't, uh, if you don't know if it, what, what type of Android it is, or if it is an Android, uh, Chris, it can hit back for me. You can go to others, and then you can actually search by the make, the model, or even the carrier. So it's pretty cool, very easy to use. Now, with some of the feature phones, there's really, really cheap phones. We all know them here as track phones. Now, the burner breaker can break into the track phone. Yay, it's the first time anything's ever been able to do that. Problem is, though, once you get into that burner phone, you'll still need a camera um, to take pictures of the actual evidence. And that's because there's no actual working port on track phones. That's why uh, you can't use any mobile forensic tool to pull that data off. It's because there's not a real port there. It looks like one, but it's only a charging point. So we'll break into that phone for you, um, and then you'll be able to, uh, you know, whatever tool or whatever camera you want to use to get into that evidence, uh, which is pretty neat, because up until now, there's been no way short of maybe using ISP or JTAGging or ripping that phone apart to get into it. Um, so it's that easy to pull data off of a phone. I'm going to have Krista go back to the home screen. We're going to hit OK. And now we're going to go to Analyze, which is our nice little magnifying glass. Um, if you're, we're not going to do the physical viewer today. That's another training. Um, so, but we do have the physical viewer, and it's called Apex. If any of you would like to see it in more detail, I have a recorded webinar you can ask for, or again, come out to some of the shows. Um, also, I do want to let you know, we often go out to HIDAs and RCFLs across the country to do presentations. Uh, we are going to be out in a few locations in the Midwest next month. And if you guys, anyone listening today would like to set that up, if you're a large police department, um, uh, we'll be happy to come out to you and demonstrate in person. Um, now, I'm going to have her go to SD Pro, which is our analyzation tools right there. And we're going to do our last case. Case, uh, there we go. It has three different phones. These are our test phones, of course. So, Chris, go ahead and click OK for me. Bottom right. <clears throat> and it's going to take a moment. It's going to pop up all of our data. So, now, SecureView, the cell phone forensic software, was actually the first mobile forensic software out there. Um, we're in use at a ton of ICACs. It was actually created for that original purpose. So you can load tons and tons of phones into SecureView. If your computer is powerful enough to load all that data, then SecureView can handle it as well. So here we have three different cell phones that are part of our case. Now, discovery is a keyword search. Um, so Chris, if you can go over to the right-hand side, there you go. Type in hello and hit add for me and then search. And this is basically pulling any of that data, any of those keywords off of the phone, off of any of those phones that are up there. So as you can see, there's some text messages. There's also some application data using the word hello um, as well. And again, normally in our trains, we go into more detail, but we all really want to see the passcode breaking, so I'm just kind of uh, running over this quickly. Um, for timeline, first of all, the next tool. Timeline is the same thing as discovery. It's another keyword search, but it tells you more closely when it happened. So if you need to, uh, if you're trying to figure out the date of a crime or the time of a crime, um, or you can only search data for a certain timeline, then, uh, then timeline is the best way of going about it. Um, next up, the link graph. <clears throat> now, link graph is going to show us, here, I'll click on it. Link graph is going to show us all of the uh, people that each one of our phones has talked to. So now, as you can see, it's doing a, graphic, a graphical representation of who our phones are talking to. Um, now, again, these are our test phones, but there you go. You can get a good seat. Uh, one of the things that we changed, which is really neat, is now if someone has pictures loaded in their phone for their contacts, you will see them now in this link graph. Obviously, these are our test phones, so all of our people up there are grayed out. And you can choose to have them grayed out like normal as well. Um, but we do, have, we do have the capability now of showing those pictures. Also, when you click on someone over on the right, you can see it highlights them over on the left. Um, all of these tools have flagging 
Again, we won't go over much today, but that's how you build your evidence reports. So you're going to flag these things to build your evidence report. All right? So pretty easy, uh, but a real nice representation of, uh, of who the phones are talking to and how they might be connected out there. Um, the next thing we're going to go into is our prime list. Prime list is literally every person that our phones have talked to. Um, when you double click on them, you don't need, we won't do it today, but if you double click on them, it's going to show every text message between the phones, any calls between the phones. So again, this is just an easy to use a way of seeing who your suspects are talking to the most. And then you can easily view that data associated with it and then flag it for your evidence reports. Now, activity map, that's the next thing. I always do an example. Why activity map is so important. Um, so we basically, we do a lot of work with the prison systems. It's actually how the burner breaker became or came about. Uh, it was actually a suggestion from a local uh, Avenal State Penitentiary here in California. Um, so we can all thank them for, for actually for uh, helping with the idea. And what happened was, or not this particular penitentiary, of course, I won't name who, but a, another prison, um, they had a lot of contraband phones. And they acquired those contraband phones and they were tossing cells. All of those phones had the same um, activity at, at certain times of the day. What they were able to figure out is going by the activity, the activity map is all those phones were being used in correlation with certain uh, correctional officers' shifts. So yes, it's a sad example, but it was internal affairs. And what they found is that these correctional officers were letting the, uh, um, letting the inmates use their phones during certain uh, times of the day. And they were able to then see that they were only being used on their actual shifts. So if a correctional officer had the day off, um, then that phone was not being in use. Um, so there you go. So it's an example of why the activity map is important. And of course, lastly, our gallery. The gallery is very powerful. Um, you can get a bunch of information off the pictures. So as you can see, on the left-hand side, it shows the picture. On the right-hand side, it's going to show the information of that picture. So the picture name, um, when it was taken, even GPS coordinates taken off that picture. Chris, if you can click on more details, it's right above the map. Now you can even, with new Security 4, you can even click on additional information, scroll down a little. This will even tell you how fast the suspect was going when taking the picture. So if they were in a, in a car shooting video or shooting that picture, it will even let you know basically if they were standing still, if they were walking, jogging, running, if they were in a car, any bit of, in, of uh, other evidence you'll find on there. You can close it out. Um, on top of that as well, one of the neat things is that you um, can also see for the pictures uh, what camera took it. So that's one of the things we implemented. It was coming up in court. Was it taken from the front-facing camera, the self or the selfie camera, that type of thing? So it will give you the additional information there. So all of these tools are at your disposal, uh, disposal, which is nice. And of course, that is secure view. So very easy to use. We won't go into the reporting today, um, but um, Chris, to go to the file and then exit out of there for us. And there we go, we're back to the home screen. So it's that simple. Now for reporting features, we have an evidence report, we have the complete report. Complete report is every bit of data taken off of that phone. All 8,000 texts, all pictures, everything else. Evidence report, of course, is the evidence that was taken off of that phone that you flagged. So that's showing basically the evidence that you found important to your case and flagged it. So there you are, nice and easy to use. Okay. So I know we want to get into some of the passcode breaking stuff. Um, now, we about a year ago, we created what was called the SV Strike. And Chris, if you want one, you can plug in that phone for me. The SV Strike was basically created because um, someone out in China had come up with something called an IP box. Um, a lot of you might have had it. Hopefully, absolutely none of you are, are no longer using it. Hopefully, you're not using it any longer. The um, reason why I say that is after government agencies, uh, state agencies purchased it, they realized it was sending data back to China. That is a big no-no. Every time they plug it in the network, um, it's sending ba uh, data back to China. Um, so obviously, we don't want to do that. So um, a few agencies put out the call to an American company to create something similar, and that's where we came into play. We created the SV Strike. And the SV Strike 
um, is, and Chris, you can click on Pass real quick and for me. There we go. You're actually looking at the SV Strikes uh, a home screen now. Uh, SV Strike works on pin codes, it works on pass codes, it works on pattern locks. It is the only tool that works on Android 6, which is the new Marshmallow. Um, and again, this is for smarter, more expensive cell phones. I can't stress that enough. Your cheapo Alcatels, they're not going to work. They're not smart enough to talk to the software. That's why you need the burner breaker. Um, it's for USB OTG phones. Um, so there you are. Um, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to take just 10 seconds here, plug in the phone, and, um, and, and I'll come right back. So give me one second there. And there we go. And I'm trying out a brand new camera, which is actually pretty cool. Hopefully you guys can all see this uh, well. So let me just show the strike real fast. This is our little strike box. It has two CPUs. That's one extra CPU than that's actually needed. Reason why is because we do updates throughout the year. Like I said, we're the only people that do Marshmallow or Android 6. Uh, so there you go. So it's a software hardware combination. Um, it will work on pattern locks as well. What I have in front of us, um, this is a Galaxy S5, so a nicer phone, a newer phone, it's USB OTG, that type of thing. One of the most important things that we want to do is we want to make sure that we're, we are matching up our device um, to the software. So obviously this is not an Android 6, it's an older, it's an S5, so it's just going to be on an Android. It's probably KitKat or um, uh, Lollipop operating system. Um, if it was an iPhone, we'd use an iPhone. If it's a super old phone, which still comes up in some other countries and even in the States, um, if it's an old phone using what's called the Brew operating system, uh, Brew, meaning B-R-E-W, like a brewing coffee, um, then you'd use the SV pin. Um, so that's important. Now, okay, so someone has a really good question because, again, this is something that only we do. And the question is, uh, do Android phones have to have USB debugging turned on um, for Strike to work? No. No, they don't. This does not require um, USB debugging to be turned on that phone. Um, so that's great. So we'll kind of move ahead. Now, uh, you have a few different options. If the phone is PIN code protected, you can uh, choose PIN. If it's passcode, you can choose passcode. If it's pattern, you can choose pattern. Um, now, I am going to load in our training software here so that it's already implemented. Give me one second, and I'll pop it up and I'll do my test pin, um, but you can choose. So most, most of the time it's gonna be pin code protected. Every once in a while you will see a passcode. We do the most common passcodes. We have the most common pin codes for you to use. So you can load any of our lists already in there. We even have an Ashley Madison list in there. Um, we do that to showcase the fact that we are constantly out there looking for the most commonly used pins and passcodes. Um, and we make sure that that's done for you and in there. Um, now, if you are connected to the internet, most of you, um, those of you with uh, federal government agencies will not be, state agencies will not be, some police departments are. If you are um, connected to the internet, you can choose uh, so that the software will warn you once it's broken into the phone, either by a text message or by an email. Um, but if not, um, then don't worry about it. So we are gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna hit start here. I'm gonna turn on the phone, maybe so you guys can see a little better. And let's see what it does. Now, what it's automatically doing is it's running through, there we go, it's throwing in a bunch of codes real fast. Why is it doing that? Well, because we want the phone to lock out. Reason why we're doing that is so that the software and the phone can be on the same page. They can be on that same lockout time. <clears throat> so the phone's going to lock out for 30 seconds. We're going to lock out for about 35 seconds just to ensure that we're over on the amount of time. Now, one other thing that the burner breaker does that the strike doesn't currently do but will have built into it is you can change the time, uh, the timeout. Um, we found that uh, our European customers or even for our larger agencies here in the States that we're getting European phones, their lockout times differ, uh, differ from American phones. It could be the same Galaxy S5, um, but their lockout time might be 60 seconds versus our 30 seconds, so very interesting. So now it's going to go through and it's starting our pin codes. 
And by the way, what this camera is doing is it is literally taking a picture of every failed attempt to get into that phone and then the correct attempt. And now why is it doing that? It's because we're building an evidence report. We're trying to build that evidence report for you guys so that if you go to court, you have an evidence report going back showing every failed attempt to get in that phone. Why? Well, it's so that a suspect can't go to court and say that they were coerced into giving you a PIN code, um, that you threatened them, anything like that. You have full evidence backing up how you got into that phone, which is wonderful. Um, so that's great. So I'm going to let it run one more. I think on our next attack screen, I believe it's going to go ahead and break into this phone. I have the, the PIN code set um, for an easy one so that we can get in quickly for you guys. I don't want you sitting here for over an hour. Um, and let's see if it goes on the next one. And there you go. And now you're into that phone. So now you have access to that phone. You can use Secure View or any other tool, forensic tool that you have in your arsenal. Strike works with all other forensic tools um, to get the data off of that phone. Um, now, people always ask, um, what happens if it's set to wipe? I have never ran across an Android phone set to wipe after 10 attempts. There are people that do that. I'm sure they're out there, but I do these cases for uh, federal, well, state agencies, uh, local police departments across the country. We've never had one set to do that. We do tell you guys, when you're sitting there with that phone, make sure that you watch that phone for the first 20 attempts, because every Android, if it is set to wipe, it is not like an iPhone. It will always warn you if that's the case. And if that is the case, you unplug it, and you're good to go at that point. The only phones that automatically wipe are iPhones. That's why this isn't specifically built for iPhones using an 8.0 or later operating system. Um, it's for the Androids and, of course, uh, other types of phones as well. So, but a very good question. And everyone always asks that, but I've, I have yet to see an Android actually in a real world situation actually be set to do that. And it, you, might, you might get one out of 20 where someone got smart and set it to wipe, but Android does not, um, does not uh, it, it doesn't automatically do that like iPhones. Those of you that see Verizon phones, Verizon phones are the only company um, that gives the person that option right up front as they're setting up the phone. So if you're in a Verizon heavy area, um, then you might see those phones a little bit more than other people. Uh, so heads up on that. Um, let's see. Okay, so one other thing is this is, uh, this is set for Marshmallow. We're the only tool that does that. Marshmallow has an increasing time frame. Um, so the first lockout attempt might be 20 seconds. The next one might be 30. The next one might be 40. The next one might be 60. Um, very good question. That doesn't happen with any of the burner phones, obviously. Um, and the, in the states, they're not set to adopt that till 2019, so you have plenty of time. Um, but for your galaxies that are using Marshmallow, and that is a concern. What the Stripe does, and this is why you use our most commonly used PIN code, passcode lists, the Stripe gives you a good 300 to 380 attempts to break into that phone before Marshmallow just gets too long to continue. So basically, eventually, it'll start pushing out one week between uh, attempts, two weeks between attempts. That's the current process right now. Um, but you're able to get in a good 300 to 350 attempts before that happens. And let me tell you what, if you have the suspect's information, meaning their date of birth, um, anything like that, I can't tell you how many times the PIN code turns out to be uh, 0114 if they were born on January 2000, or I'm sorry, if, they were, if their birthday is January 14th, that type of thing. Um, so we do give you with the most popular pins and passcodes a very good chance of getting into that. Um, you know, and there you go. And, that, and that's utilizing the strike. Um, so what we're going to do now is we'll go ahead and move to the, um, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, if you do have, this will work on any uh, iOS device up until iOS 8. So if you have an iOS 6. Point, it has to be 6.25, that is when OTG was built into the iPhones. If not, though, you can use the burner breaker. But if you're using an iOS uh, 6, not an iPhone 6, but an iOS 6, up to iOS 8, Stripe will work on those as well. Um, so there you go. Uh, now give me one minute, guys. I'm going to switch my camera over. We're going to get it on the burner breaker, and I'm going to go over that in a little bit more detail. And we're going to show you what the robot can do for you guys. So give me one second.
All right, guys. Now, hopefully, everyone should be able to see. I'm going to resume you on my screen. Hopefully, everyone should be able to see now the uh, the camera again. There, we're live. Um, it should come off on your participant uh, menu. If you don't have that up and running, I'm just going to. I'll give you a minute to uh, get that open. It, it, you should be able to see my camera somewhere there. If you can make it bigger, because we're going to showcase that. I'm going to show you the actual robot here in a little bit more detail. And there you are. Okay, so hopefully everyone can go ahead and see the camera there um, and they can still see my screen. Let's see if I can. And there you go. If you can't, go ahead and shoot a text message and just say, hey, it's really small or whatnot. But hopefully you should be able to see it very well. Okay, so we're going to start going over the burner breaker. And what you're actually seeing here is our internal preview software. Do not share this with anyone, please. Um, but uh, this is our version of the software. And why I like to go over this version is it shows you all the behind the scenes tools of what the robot is actually capable of. When you get the robot there, um, you'll have our production software that actually launches uh, this month. And it's just a little easier for you guys to use, a lot less X's and Y's and a lot more pictures so that it's friendly. Now, one of the things I do want to let you know is that the burner breaker itself, uh, the burner breaker comes with training. When you get the kit, you get training included. In some cases, we will actually fly out to you if you have a lot of investigators and do a full training for you. That is no additional cost. So keep that in mind. We do the training at no cost, which is wonderful. Um, okay, so the, we'll train you on how to use it. Now let's hit connect here and see if we can get this guy moving. And there you are. And I'm just gonna hit a button here just to see if we have our placement. We'll give it a second. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the software itself to kind of show you how it's, uh, uh, how it's working and, and what it's kind of capable of. Give me one minute. I'm just going to pop up on, on my screen here uh, so I can choose the phone. Give me one second. Awesome. Okay, guys. So the burner breaker is completely, um, it's completely basically like editable by you. There's so many, editable I should say, there's so many different types of phones out there depending on country specific. So this is not just made for the American audience. This is made for the Asian audience, uh, European, and so on. The phone that we're going to do first that you can kind of see down there, I'll turn it on real fast so you can see it lit up. This is a Chinese chipset. It's an MDK phone. And we use this phone as an example to show that this bad boy will literally get into anything, which is awesome. Now, what you're looking at here, and I'll just kind of briefly explain, these are kind of coordinates. You're, you're basically, you don't realize it, but you're looking at an X and Y graph. Those of you that were maybe good in uh, geometry and algebra, <laughs> I was not, but, uh, but you'll have a little leg up. Now, the X and Y graph, basically, you're training the burner breaker to see um, where the actual phone coordinates are. I'm going to move this down. Give me one second. And we're actually going to take a look here. Sorry if I'm making anyone do I want to get a close-up on that phone. There you go. So you're actually telling the burner breaker where the phone buttons are. I'm going to do a center offset there. That's a center offset. The most important part of finding out how to use the machine is finding where that center button is. And again, I click center offset, it's finding that center button. The next most important thing is finding where the X and where the, where the X coordinate is. Well, what is that? Well, that's the button next to the center button. That would be like the number four. Um, and once you've plugged in those two coordinates, well, guess what? All the other buttons are equidistant. So now it knows where every single additional button on that phone is, which is wonderful. 
Now, the only other thing that you would have to plug in is how you're going to keep that phone awake, where it's emergency, uh, where it's either its home screen is, its push button. So now this Chinese chipset, and this actually has a push button on it um, that the Americans do not. So, well, not all phones do. So again, and it's kind of, it's back here, but it's a push button instead of a touch screen that keeps that phone awake. So that's one of the things that you train. You train that by coming down here to the coordinates and entering in the correct ones. And now it takes about 10 minutes to set up a phone doing it this way. It's kind of trial and error. On the software you guys will receive, again, it's a lot easier because you're going to be able to move the machine over the button and program it that way. So we are working on easier software for you, but it's already very easy to set up. Now, one of the other nice things is that we have preset phones built into the machine. So if you're using an Alcatel phone, a Chinese chipset, like if you're using Alcatel is the most common screen in America. It's the 4.5 inch, the 5.5 width on that screen. So that, that Alcatel um, settings that we give you work on literally thousands of different phones. So a lot of phones are already built into the, uh, to the software. Next thing, of course, um, you get to choose what the lockout period is. Chinese phones all have 60 second lockouts. That happens in Europe a lot as well. Here in the States, it's a 30-second lockout, so this is all programmable by you. Does it have to click a backup pin? So this is used, guys, not just to break in the phone, but the burner breaker can be used to break into app locks as well. You're probably all seeing those a lot more, which is an actual application that locks you out of apps on that phone. Well, why there's a backup pin, which you can see right here, that's because on some phones, there's no enter key. So if you're typing in, especially on the applications, if you're typing in a password that's 1234 um, and that's not the correct password, when the burner breaker or when the strike or anything else keeps going, so when it goes into the next attack, 1235, 1236, it's continuously entering them into the uh, field no, because there's no enter key. So this can be trained to cause the burner breaker to hit the backspace key after every failed attempt, which is really neat. Same thing with swipe, and you'll see this in a second. Now, I found my center offset. We know where the center offset is. I need to do a wake-up test to see if I can keep this uh, phone awake. And it looks like we're right on the money. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and hit run. We'll let it keep going just a tad. And we're going to see if we can get into this phone. Um, let's see how we're doing. Two, three. And there you go. Now, I'm going to keep talking as it's going. Now, same thing with the SB Strike. The burner breaker is taking pictures of every failed and then correct attempt to get into this phone. Why that's important, again, is for that evidence report. And now, as you can see, it's kind of keeping the phone awake. There you go. While it's going through and doing its, uh, and while the phone is counting down 49 seconds, 50 seconds, uh, our, our burner breaker software has elapsed time as well. And it's going to go through and it's going to match up with that time frame. And again, this is all completely editable like, uh, for you. So if there's different lockout times, you can utilize that. Now, the robot itself built very well, um, full metal base. So it's about eight inches high. The base is about eight by eight square. It will work on up to 17 inch tablets. We are currently working on one right now for Australia, where they sent us a giant Galaxy tab. And yes, it will work on those as well, which is awesome. So what I always tell people, people say, well, what's, what's the phone support? What can this work on? I say, can you touch the phone screen with your finger? They say yes, and I say, well, it's going to break into that phone. It's that simple. It literally is built to mimic the hand of a human being. Um, and it is fully warranted. If anything goes wrong, this little guy can be completely switched out by us. We produce it, we'll send it to you. And there you go. You now have access to the phone, and you can do whatever you want. Again, Burner Breaker and Strike, they work with SecureView. If you want to use SecureView to, to download that data, awesome. But if you're more familiar with another forensic tool, go ahead and utilize it. Um, so that's pretty neat as well. So I'm going to switch this one out. And just, and again, Chinese chipset guys, MDK phone um, is basically their iPhone knockoff uh, version that we're using. Um, I'm going to do, of course, the reason why we created the burner breaker. This is the famous Alcatel. 
Well, why do you guys see so much of those? Well, in California, this is the free phone. This is the phone we give out. This is the phone that's inundating our prison system. And for most office health, they do not work on, um, on the, uh, you know, on strikes and on the other tools because they're not smart enough to talk to them. They need an actual brute force device. Um, and by the way, when I say it is warranty, there is a normal maintenance and support, um, just like every other tool uh, for the burner breaker. Um, so as long as you're upkeep on your maintenance and support, then you'll be warranty forever. So it's that simple. Again, we build them here uh, for you so we can get them out. Okay, so now, this is a different phone, right? So this is not our phone. This is an Alcatel. So we have to take a look and see what the Alcatel can do. So as you can see, it kind of changed some of the settings there. Turn on keys are in a different spot. I'm going to click that here. So we're going to need a different center offset. We have to find a completely different center offset here. Also, Alcatel screens, notoriously bad. Um, meaning that they, they're, they're tough. They don't work well even on your own fingers. So you really have to get in there and plug these phones in right. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm testing our wake up. It looks like our wake up is working perfectly on this phone as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run as soon as it's done and we're going to see if this works. And again, this is an Alcatel phone. This is, again, the number one burner prepaid phone out there. Different versions of Alcatel, but they all share the same software, and we can break into every single one of them. Um, burner breaker can break into clamshell phones, too, your true old feature phones. Um, so I do want to uh, tell you about that as well. Um, you do need to build, like, a little cradle for them. Play-Doh usually works the best. Reason why is because those clamshells will rock, obviously, if you're going to touch on the top screen. So you need to do something to stop them from rocking. One of the things I want to show you is that if you notice, our lockout period is different. So again, this is an American phone. It's going to have a 30-second lockout. It's not going to have that 60-second lockout. Um, so you want to use that. And we're going to use this to break in, and then I'm going to show you something that is pretty cool. It's actually something that we're finalizing right now on the burner breaker. Um, and what that is, is teaching the burner breaker to actually break into pattern locks as well. SV Stripes can easily break into a pattern lock cell phone if that cell phone is USB OTG capable. Um, but what about a burner phone? They have patterns too. Alcatel has patterns. ZTE has pattern locks. So I'm actually going to show, uh, show that to you. And we're going to take a look. And give me one second. And there you are. That's simple to get into the phone, guys. Um, so now I'm going to show you the ZTE. Now, this is something that we're still testing. I'm not saying it's going to work perfectly on this try, but I want to show you guys um, just the fact that there's really no limits on what this robot can do for you. Um, this is a ZTE. It is a phone that we had to go out and buy because we actually had someone who has the burner breaker have this exact phone in a real case. They got theirs to work and did open the phone. By the way, we do have testimonials on the burner breaker from the departments that have already used it. If you guys need that, email us. We'll get them out to you. Um, so we went out. We programmed the burner breaker so that it can actually do pattern locks. And I'm going to load this in here. You're going to see the settings change a little. I'm using my ZTE. I'm now did a little swipe test there for you. I'm now going to do a new pin list. Now, obviously, we don't, we're not using a pin. We're going to use the pattern locks. So we have to train, and by the way, this, all these pin lists and pattern lists and most popular lists, they all come for free with the burner breaker. So there you go. You don't have to pay extra for them. Um, it changed our thing. So what it's doing is there's a swipe required on this phone. Before you can even get to the pin code or the pattern code and screen, you have to swipe it. So you have to swipe that just to get there. So I'm going to go ahead, we're going to try to do a center offset. I've got to find that center offset a little better here. And give me one second. Krista, can you click on it right? Give me one second. All right. Uh -uh. There we go. Try it again. Now go to emergency wake, or wake up test for me. Bottom left. Up a little more, up a little more. Up. There you go, right there. And we're going to get that loaded here. It looks like it might be hitting it. Can you do it again for me? 
and it looks like we're kind of there. And then when this is done, I'm going to have you hit center offset for me again. All right, hit center offset. And I think we're still lined up. So I'm going to have her hit run. And I'm actually going to hold the phone just because we are still testing. We're going to see what this thing can do. And hopefully you're all seeing it actually import, input the pattern right there on your screen. And again, wow, it hit the S. That's the hardest one to do is the S. And now you're in that phone. And this goes to show that this product is fully supported. We have engineers that are working specifically on the burner breaker at all times to ensure that it's working on thousands and thousands of different type of phones. I cannot stress enough, it is the only tool in the world capable of doing so, and it's built right here in the United States. We are very proud of that. If you, um, and guys, that's it. I, I could show a thousand more phones, but it's really the same thing for everything. Burner Breaker works great, very easy to use. And again, I'll just reiterate what it comes with. Um, if you're not currently a SecureView user, when you buy the Burner Breaker, it's the entire kit. So you get SecureView Logical, Secure View Physical, which is Apex, you get the SV Strike, and you get the Burner Breaker. If you already have Secure View, let us know and what you can do. If you don't need an entire new license, you can just get the Burner Breaker. I would say just to get in the entire package, though, because that also comes with full training. How often have you guys ever gotten uh, certified training at no cost? And that's at no cost. And in some cases, Preferably if you live on a Hawaiian island somewhere, we will actually come out there and train you in person. Not so sure for the guys in Montana, I apologize. Um, no, I'm kidding. But we will actually do that in a lot of areas. So um, this, this product has been a godsend um, for human trafficking cases, for drug cases. We Again, we have testimonials from people that have used it on extremely important cases um, where it worked, and it worked fast. Um, because of our most popular pattern and pin code list, we can usually get into a phone within six hours. Keep that in mind. Um, so that's great. So uh, guys, everyone, thank you so much for being here today. When you are done here, please go ahead and email. If you were speaking with William, if you were speaking with Aaron, if you were speaking with Krista, let them know if you have any questions. They can get you out a quote. Um, they can help you out with anything further that you need. I do also want to let you guys know a little sneak uh, preview. Uh, we are also launching our cloud analyzer, which no one knows about yet. That comes out in October. Um, the cloud analyzer is actually going to be part of our Apex Physical Explorer. It will not cost you an extra dime if you have the burner breaker. Um, and those of you that have bought cloud analyzers before, you know they get expensive by themselves, usually $1,500 to $2,000. So that will also be included. We're very excited about that, um, which is nice. Now, if you have any questions on SecureView, let us know. SecureView, I'll just do a quick recap. The very first mobile forensic tool in the world, um, it, it actually all spawned from the data pilot, which was the largest data transfer suite um, ever, over 6 million users. And what happened is the FBI actually saw that and said, hey, guys, we noticed that you can transfer data from one phone to another. And you do it in a forensic way. That's how SecureView was born back in 2008. Um, it's now in use at over a thousand different agencies, and uh, we are hitting international markets now uh, because we can now get into Chinese chipsets, South American phones, all of our Border Patrol users. These can be placed. Neat thing with the burner breakers, well, it can be built in the field. Remember that it comes in a tough case. Um, it is ruggedized. The bottom is complete steel. I mean, the thing is heavy. Um, and it's just a great tool. So please, if anyone has any questions, contact us. Again, my name is Jeremy. I'm Director of Sales. My direct number, if you need, is 949-789-8221, and I am always available to help you. So thank you guys so much for being here, and I can't wait to help make your communities uh, even safer than they are now. This will truly be an amazing tool for you guys. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Everyone stay safe. And if you're going to be at HTCI, we'll see you there. Take care, everyone.
Gracias.